Are you going to therapy? Or you start therapy recently, probably? How do you know if it's working for you or not? The feelings are not necessarily the ones that will tell you. And I will tell you why. Therapy is an investment. Therapy can definitely change your life when it works. So stay tuned and let's explore what you can do to have a better experience. <laughs> Living in harmony is possible if you know your emotions and how to handle them. I am Dr. Carmen Roman, and I will share with you the current psychology by myself or by interviewing experts who will inspire you. Learn how to live a life of fullness and how to recover your emotional harmony. Welcome to Emotions in Harmony. Welcome back, my dear listener. Whatever you do, wherever you are, I hope you are doing great. Here, I am Carmen Roman in San Jose, California. I am a clinical psychologist and my job is to sit and listen. I have two years listening clients in, oh, you name it, any kind of problems. And some of them wonder if therapy is working for them. And it's a very, very valid question. Today, let's explore that. Your feelings may not be the indication whether therapy or not is working. Why? Because to change something, especially to do very big changes in your life, you need to go through uncomfort. It's like learning to dance, yeah? You will have days of hard work, and those days you definitely will not like to go to your class. But some days it's like, wow, I'm doing better today. And therapy is like that. However, the good news is, yes, there are certain conditions that needs to be met for your therapy to be successful. So during the first sessions, you may feel like um, navigating a new ocean. Yeah, If you are new to therapy, it feels totally new. You don't know what to talk. You kind of feel after the session that you don't know if you say something correctly or incorrectly. The good news is there is very little, like almost nothing that you can do or say incorrectly unless you are rude to the clinician, yeah? Other than that, your ideas, whatever you express, most likely they are going to be fine. Usually for my clients, the first session, the 50 minutes pass extremely fast and they want to stay sometimes more. But trust me, 50 minutes is good enough especially if you come week after week. So eventually it will be enough. The first sessions don't expect that. You want to say so many things. Yeah. The first sessions actually can make you a little more uncomfortable because you are bringing emotions and you say, oh, this is why I don't go to therapy, Carmen. Oh, it's kind of you are telling me you don't go to the gym because you are going to be sore the next day. Yes, you are going to be sore the next day because you didn't move before going to the gym that much, yeah? So if you didn't explore your emotions or you didn't feel your emotions, allow yourself to acknowledge that feeling is going to come to the surface and you are going to feel them. And that's okay. I will not be worried for a couple, like four or five sessions, yeah? You are creating change in yourself. So you may be confused at the beginning. Now, let's take a moment because I want to thank our new sponsor, G Reminders. And we are very happy to enter into this partnership that it really, I truly believe, may benefit you. Sometimes we want to serve our clients. We are the best. We prepare everything and they forget to show up because everybody has many things in their minds, yeah? This is why you can use G Reminders to set up a reminder from Google or from Outlook Calendar so your clients can write in the spot, tell you if they want to reschedule or cancel or they are coming. Very convenient. We are using it. And it's so simple that it makes everything so smooth with our service. Our lives of the clients depend on it. So we want to treat it that way. 
I always suggest if you can and you can afford and you can do it at the beginning, do weekly sessions. It's like cleaning your house. When you ask a person to come and clean your house every month, it's going to take longer and it's going to be harder for the person. And in therapy, it's the same. If you plan to go once a month, it's probably not going to work that much. Twice a month, maybe. Weekly is good. In three years, I didn't have a person or very seldom I have a person twice a week. One, because sometimes they decide to come twice a week. That's okay for me, but not medically necessary most of the time. Like probably one or two people in two years. So I don't recommend that often, the twice a week. Depends on the theory that your therapist work and depends on your needs as well. Some diagnostic requires even more than twice a week. But if you are in this situation, you probably went from one therapist to another already. When we are talking about suicide prevention, probably, yes, you will see your therapist more often. Don't decide if you are going to quit therapy that early. Wait, wait. Wait until the 6, 10, even 12 session. Those are the conditions that I want you to think about it. If you pass the 5 session, even the 10 session, and you don't feel understood, by your therapist, you probably didn't feel understood since the beginning. Because one thing is that you are going to have these difficult emotions, your own emotions. And another thing is that the therapist is not being respectful to you or is not listening to you or is not a good match. Yeah. If you don't feel that it's a good match and you don't feel understood, it's time to change your psychotherapist. And that's okay because choosing a psychotherapist is sometimes like choosing a pair of shoes. It needs to be comfortable for a long walk. A comfortable pair of shoes. Sorry, my colleagues, I didn't mean anything in particular. It's just that it's a good metaphor. I like it. <laughs> this is the most important indicator. You start feeling understood, listened to. The second indicator is that eventually after four or five sessions, you start feeling better. Sometimes you even look forward to go to your session and you like it and you enjoy it. And it's very important to you. After people pass the first couple of sessions, they really love to come to therapy and say anything. And you know what? In therapy, you can say absolutely everything like unfiltered conversations because it's all about you. All about your fears, all about your desires. So it's a very magical private space. So you start feeling better now. You start looking forward for your sessions. You like these conversations with your therapist. And number three, you start switching to more helpful behaviors, helpful decisions or healthy decisions, so to speak. You feel like you are motivated to do changes. And the changes, my dear friend, belong to you. It's not that the psychotherapist is going to do the changes for you. They are your changes. But if you feel motivated and you think that you are like these little glimpses of changes in the positive way, well, the transformation has begun. <laughs> the number four is you have a clear vision what you want to achieve with your therapy. And it's a healthy, good for all involved vision. And you and your psychotherapist agree in that vision or in that goal and you are working toward it. So you need to be sure that you convey that vision and you need to be sure that your psychotherapist understands that vision. Sometimes I don't agree with the goals of my clients and then I tell them and then we together we build different goals. Or sometimes I don't agree and then they explain to me and then they persuade me. So it requires a little of fine tune. For example, Petra comes to therapy and say, I have this experience of trauma and I want to eliminate that trauma from my life. I want to eliminate that experience. And we go a little back and forth because I say you don't eliminate the experience. You learn to see differently the experience. But Carmen, I want to behave like nothing ever happened to me. Well, that's not true. Even if we magically, by hypnosis, erase that memory from your brain, your body already made changes. Your personality already changed. So if we ignore those changes, they are going to like pop up 
in other areas of your life when you really don't want them. So ignoring your feelings is not a good idea. So number five, you feel motivated to do more good things. When you start doing changes and transformation for good, and probably by now we are talking about months, you start actually now shaping your personality the way you want it. Again, it's like going to the gym. When you start going to the gym and keep going and keep going, you do this transformation in your body. And actually, sometimes when you leave the gym, you feel like you want healthy food. Did you have that experience? So it's the same for therapy. This is how I see therapy. Therapy is the lab. It's a laboratory where you get to practice healthier conversations. And then supposedly you feel loved and well-received and well-accepted and not judged and all of these things. And that impregnates your well-being, your way of moving in life. And then you start being that light for others. Not surprisingly, some of my clients that they came for quite some time, when they leave, they normally send somebody else. It's natural. Because they want somebody else to have the same experience. Or some people start asking, what are you doing that you are changing? So they say, oh, you know, I have been going to therapy. And then they, oh, I want to go too. Those were the basics for you to know that you are in the correct place. And the rest is heavy work. So this is the part when we talk about what you need to do to have a better experience. Number one, have a list of topics that you want to work on. Dedicate time to prepare, to journal, to write. Journaling is beautiful because if you journal like right now, March 2022, this is how I experience in life, blah, blah, blah. And then one year from now, this is how I see life. And then you go back and you say, wow, I have been really changing in the past year. So journaling and writing down your topics and bring, don't be afraid to bring those notes to your session. Number two, make sure that you are completing your homework. Sometimes I give homework to my clients that seems so simple, especially when we work with anxiety. The first homework is practice your breathing. It has a lot of scientific explanation, and I normally say the scientific explanation in the first session or when I leave that particular homework. And I ask the next session, and people say, oh, no, I forgot. So It doesn't matter how many sessions you come because I will be talking to an empty nothing. Yeah. So your homework is for you to appropriate the changes, the knowledge and do something with it. So do your homework. Sometimes it's listening to a book, listening to a podcast episode or sometimes even I tell my clients to watch a movie or look for certain show or something that will make them to see or think differently. Sometimes it's talking to somebody. Sometimes it's journaling or playing uh, an instrument or drawing or whatever in words for them. If there are homeworks that you cannot complete, that also informs the process. So don't be never afraid to say, I didn't make the time or I couldn't do it. Or this is what had happened when I tried to do my homework. And then that's material for working in therapy. I always ask, if you are paying directly your therapy or somebody else is paying. And if you are paying directly, good for you. If somebody else is paying, like your partner or your family member, or your parents or the school or the government or the insurance or whatever. Why? Because sometimes it really doesn't matter who pays. It really matters what price are you paying for them to pay. Example. I have a woman in my, in my therapy room that she comes and she needs to do changes to be better, to behave better. I don't know. Yeah, some changes. These changes may seem that they are not of the benefit of the husband. And the husband is the one paying therapy. Do you think the husband will want to keep paying therapy? Probably not. Or vice versa, the wife to the husband or the parents to the child. Yeah. So whoever is paying the therapy has an agenda and you want to be very clear who and why and how they expect you to improve in therapy. The best is if you can negotiate your own income or if you can negotiate the money and then you pay yourself. 
So you can detach the goals and you can focus on yourself. Actually, when a person starts taking therapy, sometimes the family gets a little irritated because they don't like the changes. What do you mean that you didn't self-respect yourself before and now you are practicing self-respect and now I need to change around you? What do you mean by that? I don't like it. So they start being kind of resentful of therapy for couple sessions. And then when they see you happy, growing, being better, sleeping better, eating better, working better, whatever you do in your life better, they start being grateful. But that's a process that they need to go through. And if you didn't negotiate or didn't talk about being independent of your goals for that person to be pain, well, you will end up without resources. And then the last thing you can do to make your therapy work is ask your therapist all the questions. Every question that comes to your mind, that's okay about your process to clarify. Yeah. All the questions about you, your process, your goals, your treatment, whatever you want to ask, is your process own it. Have some advocacy for yourself. Don't try to work for the therapist. I work with a lot of colleagues in my field with a lot of clinicians. I have been working with clinicians like ever since almost I started doing therapy. And they want to work on themselves. They want to see what theory I am using. They want to understand and they want to do my job. But that's not relaxing. It's not relaxing for them. I normally say, just relax. Let me do my work. Actually, when I have clinicians in therapy, I allow them, if they are really interested into what I am doing and what I say and how I say it, I allow them a couple times the last 10 minutes to ask technical questions. Why you did that on me? What happened? Yeah, and they can ease their mind with their technical questions. And that will help them to focus on themselves because the whole thing is to focus on yourself. I hope that this information is helpful for you and if you are in therapy and you think your therapy is not working I hope you became an advocate after this episode and you go and change whatever you need to change for your therapy to work including maybe changing your therapist remember the goal here is for you to change for better so it's very important that you take that goal in your hands Thank you for being here with me until the end. And if you are still here, do me a huge favor and subscribe. Whatever platform you are using, please subscribe to this podcast. And an extra super favor, go to YouTube, find Emotions in Harmony and subscribe. I know we have thousands of people listening to the podcast and we want to make a difference in YouTube too, but we need to reach certain number at least a thousand subscribers. If you go to Spanish, well, it's different. In the Spanish, we pass already the 40,000 subscribers. So help us to do a difference in English. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being here. I am going to enjoy the rest of my day and I hope you do so as well. Bye for now. We have reached the end of another episode of the podcast Emotions in Harmony. See you the next week. Visit www emotionsinharmony.org where you can subscribe, find the notes, and be in direct contact with me. Thanks for listening.